Well, I'm Pastor Jim Peters, and you are joining us at Our Savior's Lutheran Church in Topeka, Kansas, for worship on Sunday, October the 25th, Reformation Sunday. And uh, as you can see behind me, we have new red pyramids to help us celebrate today. These pyramids were made and designed for us by Pat Dunham. And I know we have a high-def camera, but I still say sometime when these are up, you have to come by and see them and see some of the cool details that are part of these new pyramids. So we definitely want to thank Pat for making these for us. And we are going to have a dedication prayer for them uh, towards the end of our service today. But today we gather as the people of God to give thanks to God for God's love and guiding presence in our lives, which has seen our church through 503 years of Reformation. And we are still hearing God's call to reform the church even today. And every time someone is baptized in our church, we are drawn deeper into the the call and the tradition of Reformation. And it just so happens on this Sunday, we are celebrating with Genesis and Miguel Keeley as they're going to be baptized at our in-person service this morning. And we are also celebrating with Brandon, Yvonne, Drew, and Josie on their confirmation day. I am so glad that you are here to celebrate with us. We'll begin our worship today with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates, redeems, and sustains us and all of creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving ways to go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble, cast away our transgressions, and turn us again to life in you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God hears the cries of all who call out in need, and through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen. Amen. Please join in singing our gathering hymn, that traditional Reformation hymn, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. And please know that the third verse will be sung by grace nuns alone.
Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. This is the word of victory for our God. Alleluia.
part of this book is about baptism. So let's take a quick look at what Martin Luther has to say about the waters of baptism. Number one, what is baptism? Answer, baptism is not simply plain water. Instead, it is water used according to God's command and connected with God's word. So I think you can see the special connection in baptismal water. God wants us to be baptized because baptism makes us a special part of God's family. And remember, it's the presence of God's word that really makes the waters of baptism something special. And when we are baptized, we become children of God. So let's celebrate with Genesis and Miguel today, and let's remember our own baptism too. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you so much for the, the gift of the church and our faith and the great teachings that we rely on every day. We ask you to bless us every day and help us to remember our baptism and your gift of salvation. We ask for all of these things in the name of your Son, Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I, I was their husband says the Lord. But this, but this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after, the, after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, <clears throat> and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The song will be sung responsibly with the cancer. <laughs>
those who are under the law, so that every mouth shall be silenced, and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For no human being will be justified in his sights, in his sight, by deeds prescribed by the law. For though through the law comes knowledge of sin, but now, apart from law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed, and is attested by the law and the prophets. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We are now justified by His grace as a gift, through the redemption that is, Je is Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement by His blood, effected through faith. He did this to show His righteousness, because in His divine forbearance He has passed over the sins previously committed. It was to prove at the present time that He Himself is righteous, and that He justifies the one who, would, who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of boasting? It is excluded. By what law? By that of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that a person is justified by faith, apart from works prescribed by the law. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Congratulations to all of our confidants. And without further ado, here they are. Brandon, Yvonne, Drew, and Joseph. They've been with me in the trenches of confirmation class for the past two years. And I'd like to thank them for showing up, for working through the entire curriculum, and for playing confirmation quiz bowl. You're all superstars. Of course, we were supposed to be doing this back around the middle of May, but we weren't even meeting in person then. But if we couldn't do a springtime this Sunday makes a good alternate because there's a lot about this day 
that it's about taking a stand and doing what is right. Today, as I've said, our church is celebrating Reformation Sunday, which we do every year on the last Sunday in October. And we always celebrate on this particular Sunday because legend has it that it was on October the 31st, 1517, when Martin Luther first posted the 95 Theses on the door of the Castle Church in Wittenberg. And that was only the beginning of what would go on to become a seismic shift in the life of the church and really in the history of the world. But it all started out as an attempt to invite a bunch of scholars to have a debate. Luther thought that the church was heading in the wrong direction. And so he gave his top 95 suggestions about how to begin to turn things around. But the idea of making lists and naming top things didn't begin or end with Martin Luther. It's still happening all the time today. And while today's lists are usually not as consequential as the 95 Theses, they still matter to us just the same. We all have our favorites, our top picks, the things that we like the best, because they're all reflections who we really are. And really, these things help us to make life better. Well, I asked our confirmation students about some of their favorite things, and I'd like to share some of their responses with you. Now, I'm not going to be telling you who said what, so don't expect to be able to start teasing them on their tastes. But if you know our students, you might be able to figure it out anyway. So here are some of the top picks of our confirmation class. Favorite foods include things like chicken, dolmas, which are kind of stuffed grape leaf, sandwiches, and nachos. Favorite movies are the SpongeBob SquarePants movie, Midway, The Hunger Games, and Uncle Drew. Favorite TV shows include Once Upon a Time, The Amazing World of Gumball, Basketball, and I don't really watch much TV. Favorite kind of music or performer includes Two Votes for Skillet, Rap Music in General, and Lloyd. And finally, our students' favorite time of the day, 3.45, 11 a.m., afternoons, and mornings. I realize, of course, that quite a few of these responses are subject to change. As our students get older, they're undoubtedly going to find new favorites, new things to enjoy. But I think it's kind of fun to take a look at what they like right now. But there are some favorites some top-of-the-list items that are more than of the moment. They're meant to be for all time. And there's one top-of-the-list, best-of-all-time thing that I especially want to remind you of today. 
because it is so important for what we're doing here today and for all of life. In the gospel that we just shared, Jesus is asked a pretty important question. But the guy asking the question is hostile. And this is just another attempt to make Jesus look bad. Which commandment in the law is the greatest? Which might seem like a pretty straightforward question at first. But you have to remember that there are more than 600 commandments that can be found in the Old Testament. How in the world are you going to sort through all of that to come up with the best of the best? Well, as you've probably heard, Jesus cheats a little and actually ends up naming two commandments instead of just one. But his answer is very clear and also very excellent. And I'd like to repeat it if you'll also allow me to paraphrase just a little. Love God with everything you have. Love your neighbor the way you love yourself. Everything else in the Bible depends on this. Does he really mean everything? Yes, everything. Love is supposed to be what we're known for. The most basic part of our job description. The one thing that we are supposed to do ahead of everything else. The distillation of the promises that our confirmation students are going to be making this Sunday. The reason why Martin Luther posted those 95 theses in the first place. Love is where God wants us to take a stand. But I want you to notice that it all begins in a kind of unexpected place. It begins with loving yourself. Now that doesn't make you vain or conceited. But Jesus knows that everybody knows something about self-preservation. Looking out for ourselves is pretty much a matter of instinct. And Jesus says, if you know something about taking care of yourself, then you already know what I mean by loving God and loving your neighbor. You can't live without doing it. For those who are being confirmed today, for Miguel and Genesis as they are baptized, and for everybody who strives to follow Christ in their lives, the message couldn't be any clearer. What Jesus really wants is for us to have a full relationship with God, an involved relationship with one another, and to pay caring attention to ourselves. That's our favorite. Amen. Amen.
let us profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe, O God, 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 the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With confidence in God's grace and mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Renew and inspire the church in the freedom of the gospel, O God. Where the church is in error, reform it. Where the church speaks your truth, strengthen it. Where the church is divided, unify it. Ignite in us the working of your Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sustain Genesis, Miguel. Brandon, Yvonne, Josie, and Drew, and all your people in the gifts and promises of baptism. May our life together be marked by love of you and love of one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As the earth changes, as mountains shake and the waters roar, may we care for this planet as a holy habitation for all living things. Sustain all peoples and lands recovering from natural disasters of any kind. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide areas of the world divided or traumatized by conflict, especially in our own land. Free all from slavery and human trafficking and protect all in harm's way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Release those living in bondage to deaths, chronic pain, or addiction. Grant healing touch to those who are ill, especially those we name aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Betsy, Daisy, Dana, Shayla, Daryl. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In this family of faith, we give thanks for courageous voices that have remained firm in their commitment to the one who frees us from sin and death. Centered in your grace, unify us in the hope of the gospel. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Even in death, you free us and give us a place in your house. We give thanks for our ancestors who have shown us truth and freedom, especially Martin Luther and those who work for the renewal of the church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Listen as we call on you, O God, and enfold in your loving arms all for whom we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Once again, I would like to thank you for your support of our church. We really appreciate your generosity as we move forward. And remember, you can make an offering to our church anytime through our church's website, by mailing your offering into the church, or by dropping your offering off of the church during regular business hours. And again, I thank you so much. <laughs>
God of wisdom, in your Son, Jesus, you teach us to love one another and to share the gifts of our lives. Receive these gifts of thanksgiving for all that you have done for us. Bring forth from us a rich of lives dedicated to your service. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer our Savior gave us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. I have a few announcements to share with you before we finish. Uh, first of all, I want to ask for your prayers for Cecilia Harris. As you may have heard, uh, earlier this week, uh, Cecilia fell and broke her hip and it required surgery. Now, this is being recorded on Wednesday evening, and she had surgery today. And Ed called to let me know that the surgery went well, and uh, they were already planning to get Cecilia up and letting her to start put a little bit of weight on her hip. So we thank God for that. But please pray for her in her continuing recovery. And pray for Ed, too. Uh, I want to remind you, or well, just to let you know, that uh, there will not be an uh, adult Sunday school meeting this morning. But there will be next Sunday on November the 1st. So be sure, sure uh, to tune in for that. Uh, tomorrow night, Monday, October the 26th uh, is the time for our fellowship Zoom meeting. Uh, this is something that is being sponsored by our outreach committee. And uh, it's being sponsored because we realize that we haven't been able to get together and just visit a little bit and check in with each other as much as we would like. So if you have access to a computer, a smartphone, a tablet, I invite you to join us and share in a little time of fellowship together. And the link to that is in the bulletin, and it's in this week's midweek as well. Uh, so please check it out, and please join us if you can. Next Sunday, we will be celebrating All Saints Sunday. So remember, if there is anyone that you want included uh, in our prayers for the deceased, in thanksgiving for them, uh, be sure and let us know so we can add their names to the Book of Remembrance. And finally, as I promised at the beginning of this service, uh, I want to offer a blessing prayer for our new parents. Our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Sisters and brothers in Christ, today we give thanks to God, and we seek God's blessing as we set apart these new parents to the glory of God. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, creator of the universe, for you have enriched our lives with every good and perfect gift. You have commanded us to show your splendor to our children, and you have invited us to praise you with lives of love, justice, and joy. Send your blessing on these parents, which we set apart today. May they, may they adorn this house Show us the beauty of holiness, and so proclaim the glory of your majesty. 
To you, O oh God, be all glory and honor through your Son, Jesus Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And may the God of all creation, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved, who strengthens us for service, give you reason to rejoice and be glad. And the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you today and always. Amen. Amen. Please join in our ascending hymn. If you're using a hymnal, it is hymn number 546, to be your presence. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.